Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. The driver of a DDOT bus has been charged after hitting and killing someone while driving downtown. I'm Rhonda Walker. Thank you for joining us this Wednesday at noon. 67 year old Janice Bauer of Gross Point Park was walking at the intersection of Congress and Griswold Streets when she was hit by a bus on June 2nd. 59 year old Geraldine Johnson was the driver of that bus and now she is facing charges. We head now to Sean Lay who has been monitoring court all morning and Sean talk to us about what it was like in the courtroom. She has not appeared yet. We've been monitoring and asking why somewhat of a delay here, but that's not unusual for 36 district court arraignments. We are understanding that she will be arraigned. It was supposed to be at 1030, but it could be any minute now and we're continued to monitor. What we are is right at the scene here at Congress and Griswold where this happened. We were here two weeks ago. People were horrified. Woman hit straight on by a DDOT bus. How could that happen? Let's talk about what happened now and what we're expecting out of court. Geraldine Johnson, as you mentioned, Rhonda, 59 year old DDOT bus driver from Hopper Woods, a longtime bus driver with DDOT. June 2nd is Friday. It was free Friday at the Grand Prix, just a block away. Johnson, the prosecutor's office says, turned her bus in front of Janice Bauer, 67 year old from Gross Point Park. Now, Ms. Bauer had the right of way, according to prosecutors. She was in a crosswalk. She had the green light. Why was the DDOT driver pulling into her path? Did she not see her? Was she distracted? Again, Grand Prix just a block away. So that's still under investigation. Johnson charged with a moving violation now causing death. She drove for DDOT when she hit and killed another pedestrian back in 2015. That family sued. The city paid out a settlement. Johnson got retrained by DDOT and who excuse me was put back behind the wheel of a DDOT bus again we are waiting her arraignment we'll have much more on if she's going to be held without bond and what DDOT in the city has to say now that another uh, that her she has been charged in this case she was not charged in that original case uh, Rhonda back to you okay Sean thank you Harper Woods police are looking into a deadly accident that happened around 10 o'clock last night on eastbound I-94 near 8 mile and Vernier police are saying that a 23 year old man from Roseville was hit on the shoulder of the freeway as he was trying to change a flat tire the suspect then fled the scene on foot before later being taken into custody police say that the 25 year old woman from Clinton Township will undergo a blood draw they also say that she will be charged for biting an officer during the arrest. A fire broke out inside the popular Kirby's Coney Island restaurant in Southfield this morning and significant damage has been left behind, particularly to the inside of the building. Investigators are working to identify what caused the fire that uh, overtook the diner located right there on the Northwestern Highway Service Drive near 10 Mile and Evergreen. The building's exterior appeared mostly unaffected apart from at least one broken window, but the fire ruined almost everything inside of this restaurant. It does not appear that anyone was injured, but it does look like it's going to have to be completely rebuilt. This morning, the Detroit Metropolitan Airport conducted an airport disaster and preparedness training exercise mandated by the FAA. The exercise involves a mass casualty incident starting with an active shooter and ending with a hostage situation and simulated explosion on board an aircraft. Attendees of the Eastern Michigan University 2023 police and fire staff and command leadership programs acted as injured persons for that exercise. Michigan Republican Party Chairperson Christina Caramo is being ordered to pay more than $58,000 in legal fees after filing that lawsuit challenging absentee voting in Detroit. Carmano, uh, Caramo like me, you know and I'm others sued word. to try to force That's Detroit residents to vote in person or go to city clerk's offices to get an absentee ballot. She made allegations about Detroit election statutes and absentee ballot procedures. Her lawsuit was thrown out shortly before the midterm election last year. A Wayne County Circuit Court judge said that the lawsuit was absent of any facts. Former President Trump is back in New Jersey this morning after pleading not guilty on federal charges in Florida. The former president was arrested and arraigned in Miami yesterday. NBC's Bree Jackson is in Washington with a breakdown of how his supporters and critics are reacting today. A defiant former President Trump delivered remarks from his New Jersey golf club Tuesday night. 
The former president did not use his speech to deny having the classified documents, and he did not deny the obstruction of justice charges against him. Former President Trump addressed supporters after entering a not guilty plea in federal court. This day will go down in infamy. Prosecutors allege that Trump mishandled and schemed to hold on to classified documents. He faces 37 felony counts. Charging a former president of the United States under the Espionage Act of 1917. The historic arraignment drew crowds of opponents and supporters. Freedom for Trump! Freedom for Trump! Hello, everybody. During a quick stop at a Cuban restaurant, some sang happy birthday to the former president. Happy birthday! Some birthday! Who turned 77 today. Others sang his praises outside the federal courthouse. The Trump train is not a train anymore, it's a starship. Actually, a fleet of starships. On the campaign trail, his former running mate turned 2024 challenger Mike Pence is among those raising concerns. I had a chance to review the indictment over the weekend, uh, and this indictment contains serious charges, and I cannot defend what is alleged. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell avoided questions about Trump's indictment and says he wants to stay out of the 2024 race. I'm not going to start commenting on the various candidates we have running for president. There are a lot of them. It's going to be interesting to watch. People across the world are watching and waiting to see how the legal cases against the now twice indicted former president play out. And Judge Eileen Cannon, a Trump appointed judge, has been assigned to oversee the trial. In Washington, Bree Jackson, NBC News. All right, Bree, thank you. After months of less than stellar sales numbers, Bud Light is no longer the top selling beer in the United States. That now goes to Modelo Especial, now holds that spot on the podium. According to an analysis of Nielsen data, Modelo represented more than 8% of retail store beer sales in the four weeks ending June 3rd, while Bud Light was just above 7% during that same time. The drop in sales seems to be coinciding with the Bud Light teaming up with transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney. Misinformation surrounded the sponsored post, causing some people to boycott the brand. Yep. UPS drivers could soon get air conditioned trucks for the first time after reaching a tentative deal with Teamsters leaders. The agreement comes after years of heat related complaints by labor leaders. More than 100 UPS workers have been hospitalized for heat illness and this is just in the most recent years. The tentative agreement would require in cab air conditioning in most UPS delivery vehicles purchased after January 1st of 2024 and two Fans would also be installed in packaged cars. Just means they won't have to drive with the doors open anymore, which is a common sight when you see those right. UPS drivers. But it never dawned on me that they didn't have air conditioning. Me That's either. Oh I just thought God. it was because they have to jump in and out so often it didn't right. make sense to close the door. But wow. yeah, AC would be nice on a hot day. Yeah, I mean, at least that we have a cooler day so far today. We have been warming up from the last couple, but boy, you had to feel for them when we had that stretch of near 90 degree days. And we will be warming up heading into this weekend. Right now, a live look downtown Detroit. The flags are pretty calm. It is flag day, so appropriate to show those at this noon hour. 65 degrees, partly cloudy skies in the metro Detroit area with a north northwesterly breeze around eight miles per hour, but downtown looking like it's tapered off a little bit. So we have a double header going on at Comerica Park today. So we're just about an hour away from the first pitch of the first game where we'll be closer to 70 degrees. Then we'll top out around 75 just in time for that second game at 440. Comfortable and sunny throughout the day. Few clouds mixing in a little bit later. 65 at Metro, same at City Airport and Ann Arbor. 64 up in Lapeer, 62 in Sandusky, Port Huron at 63. As we look at satellite and radar, though, not a whole lot to show you across lower Michigan. Few clouds mixing in off towards Grand Rapids, but the rain showers we were dealing with yesterday, well east of Buffalo. So for today, at least this afternoon, it is a warmer Wednesday as we top out in the mid 70s. We have some showers that return tomorrow. We'll walk you through it in just a few.